Hello everyone, SignVectors241 here, back with another tutorial video. For this video, I'll just be showing you how to install Bridge and use the program. In the next part of the series, I'll be showing you how to create an item and a couple of other things. So, let's get into it. So the first thing we'll be doing is we'll be navigating to this website. I'll be leaving a link to the description below so you can also get to this website. Next thing is we need to download the bridge program which is on the left hand side. Now there are four versions to choose from the web app, the macOS, Linux and Windows versions. The difference between the macOS, Linux and Windows between the web app is the web app is actually a version of Bridge that runs in your browser. Now you can install Bridge as web app but it may not work properly and not as fast as a native installation. However for Android users you, you have to use the web app version as there is no native installation for the Android or iOS versions. So, we'll be installing Bridge for Windows. So, right now, I'll just be clicking Windows, Bridge Windows, and we'll just click on the Bridge file. Then we'll click on Next, Next, and Install to install the program. And as you can see, Bridge has installed. Now let's launch Bridge and see what is going on. And as you can see, I already had Bridge installed before, but this is what Bridge should look like when you have it installed, which doesn't look any different from the web app version. So to get started, create a local project. Now with the local project creation, if you want to create a scheme pack, a world template, you can click these, you can enable or disable these, and you can have these enabled or disabled. The behavior pack and resource pack are the most common types to have enabled, as they make up the structure of your atom. If you do not need a resource pack, you can just disable this, and you can just leave the behavior pack as is. But for now, we'll be enabling both for future tutorials. Next thing is experimental gameplay. And what this does is it enables Bridge to generate certain uh, functionalities that are experimental in Minecraft. For example, the beta APIs, which if we look in under experiments under the create new world, we can see beta APIs, which directly references that. The most common to have enabled is the holiday creator features and the beta APIs. So I will be leaving these two on for upcoming the tutorials. Next is individual files. Basically, this just makes up the template of your add-on. If you want to disable certain ones, you can click on these and disable these. The most common thing is to have actually all of them enabled, but for player.json, since most add-on creators do not like modifying player.json's, we'll just be disabling that. Next is project icon, which is optional, and you can set this to whatever you want. Next is a project name which will make up the name of your add-on. So add-on tutorial. Next is the project description which is optional so you can leave this blank but I will be putting something here so let's just say add-on tutorial pack. Next is the project author. That is basically your name or whatever you want to be referenced by. I'll just be doing my name 
or my game attack name. The ne then the next thing is the project target version. The thing about project target version is the version that you choose will define how many versions you support. So for example, if I, che if I check 1.19.0, I will be supporting Minecraft versions from 1.19.0 and above. So it will be supporting 1.19.0 through to 1.20.20 in this current state or in this current day. But for now, I will be choosing 1.20.0 as it's a more updated API than 1.19.0. Next is the project prefix. What this is, is it defines the namespaces or the names for your namespaces as you develop items and entities. So for example, right now it is set to bridge. And if we were to create an item named tutorial, bridge would generate the namespace identifier of that item to bridge dot dot item name which is the format that it will be in but for now we'll actually change this to sign and what it will generate if we generate a item is sign dot dot item name and basically that just makes up the identifier of your item or whatever it is you create. Now these two toggles down here are basically small variations to how your add-on generates. So add pack name description to directly to the manifest. What this means is the name and the project description will be added directly inside the manifest.json file instead of it relying on a language file which can be used for translations but for now I'll just be leaving this off since we may want to translate the add-on and the project description to something else in French for example I don't know why but it's a theory next is set project for use with bedrock dedicated servers and what this means is it will generate the add-on pack for use with the Bedrock servers or BDS software which can be installed onto BDS servers but for now I'll just leave this off I have never used this toggle at all never ticked any of these you can just leave these both off by default so let's click on create and as you can see bridge has generated our add-on pack. It has generated the resource pack which is highlighted in blue and the behavior pack which is highlighted in red. Now in bridge everything in red is a behavior so everything that is red is part of the behavior pack. Everything that is blue is part of the resource pack and the resource pack is basically the textures of your entities and your items and the language packs but for the behavior pack side this just defines how the entities behave in your world and this is actually ran on server side so keep that in mind the resource pack is also actually ran on the client side so also keep that in mind the second thing I will be showing you is how to switch between text editor and tree editor. Now tree editor is used for less experienced programmers in JSON. But for more experience I would suggest you use text editor since it's a lot better and you have a lot more control over how you type things. So. To actually change from between tree editor and text editor is you need to go to project settings and then editor and then under JSON editor raw text tree editor tree editor 
raw text. So I will show you what it looks like in Tree Editor. Basically, it just changes JSON format into something that allows you to add values, edit them in a bit more constrained way, but it will follow the JSON format a lot better than having to write it out if you are not new, if you are not familiar with JSON. But for now, I'll just be sh putting this into raw text editor. So if we reopen this, as you can see, it's basically just a raw text editor. The second thing I also want to show you is how to create new files. So to create a new file, you just click on the three dots, then new file. And basically, this just allows you to create anything from an entity to an item to script API and everything else. So for example, an attachable, which is basically a armor, or you can have 3D items with attachables. Then materials for something like, I'm not really sure, probably an enchant glid. Not really sure what these are used for. Second thing is client animation and client animation controllers. These are just animations that run on the client side. And of course you can have a server animation, which is basically running commands on the server side. And that is a lot of things. So I will not be explaining through everything over here, but I'll be showing you how to create a blank item. So, to create a blank item, you just click on blank item under item. And then we set the identifier. Now the identifier is how the item is defined in game. So right now, if you remember the project prefix, we set it to sign. Now, if we were to set the identifier to tutorial item, it would be in game sign dot dot tutorial item because that is how we set our project prefix. So if we set this to tutorial item and then set the display name to tutorial item and click on create, as you can see, the identifier matches our prefix with a semicolon or a colon in the middle between our item name or the item identifier and our pro project prefix and this just makes it so your item won't get overridden by another I other pack or so you can have multiple packs on and your item will just be fine even though if they do the same thing but have different identifiers so Right now, as you can see, format version is 1.16.100, but we set our format version to 1.20.0. It's something to do with how Bridge generates prefixes, but we can actually change this to 1.20.0. So we can actually update the format version and we can change some of this code so there are no errors. Now, this item currently doesn't do anything, but it should be available for us in game. So what we can do is we can actually head back to Minecraft, create a new world, add the add-on pack to our world, both the resource and the behavior pack, remember that? That's if it does, okay, there we go. And then what we need to do is since we enable two experiments, we need to enable the holiday creator features and the beta APIs. Next, we'll just do whatever we need to do. Here, cheats, always day, change these off. And then we click on create. And if we open our inventory and scroll all the way down, we can see a new item. And this is the item we created in Bridge. 
It's as simple as that. Now currently the item does not do anything as we saw in the code but in the next tutorial video I'll be showing you how to make this a bit more functional. Anyways, without further ado, I'll see you all later. Bye!